We are creeping up, getting closer and closer to the official trailer drop for Grand Theft Auto 6. It feels so good to say that and know that it's 100% happening. And for once, I'm not speculating. I'm not going off rumors or leaks. I'm going off what Rockstar straight up told us. Everybody knows. We know they confirmed earlier this month that they're planning on showing off the trailer for the new Grand Theft Auto game in early December. That's just a few weeks away from the time I'm making this video, and the hype around this simple confirmation has been ridiculous. Now, we don't know if that's going to be a teaser trailer, just a logo trailer, or a full-on blown-out trailer. We'll have to wait and see, but it doesn't matter. It's about to be real. The tweet confirming the trailer, just a text tweet, has been viewed over 173 million times in less than two weeks. Currently has over 1.5 million likes, making it one of the most liked gaming tweets in the history of the platform. I should tell you how much hype there is surrounding this game. You already know, but we're still a few weeks to out and the community has been getting very analytical regarding what we could be seeing next month. So today we're going to go over some new revelations that were made regarding how GTA 6 is going to look, how it's going to run, how it's going to play. You let me know uh, if you're ready. Drop a like and let's get into the news. A recent thread started getting a lot of attention on the GTA subreddit. It raised some very interesting points. There's been a lot of talk about whether or not Rockstar is actually going to be able to push the graphics of their next game much further than what was already accomplished in Red Dead Redemption 2. Or are they just mainly going to be focusing on things like NPC behavior and game stability? Because let's be real, Red Dead Redemption 2 looks incredible. And on the surface, it doesn't really look like there's much more that can be done with a new Rockstar game in terms of graphical quality. How do you take a game that already looks pretty much lifelike and make it better? Well... That's where the information in this thread comes in. Before we move on, guys, if you get anything from G2A, use code CHAOS. Get yourself some cash back. The link is at the top of the description, whether you're shopping for Steam codes, gift cards, new PC games, whatever it is. Now, a member of the GTA 6 subreddit opened a massive thread by saying they are not an insider, but they are a software engineer. And they're very experienced in maximizing the performance of software, and they want to go into extreme detail as to why they believe the graphical leap between RDR2 and GTA 6 will be even a great leap than what we saw between GTA 5 and Red Dead 2. I'm skeptical. We'll see. I won't copy-paste the entire thread, but I'm going to break down their main technical reasons for the statement, and I will let you guys debate this in the comments. And also, random thought, how many of you own Take-Two Interactive stock right now? I want to know in the comments how much of it. Do you own, if you don't mind me asking, I mean, I think it's almost at $155 a share. It jumped over $10 since the announcement. What's going to happen the day the trailer drops? I'm just curious. Okay, the OP starts by talking about the CPU power of the PS5 and the Xbox Series consoles and how they're a pretty huge leap from what was loaded into the PS4 and the Xbox One. Allows them to handle many more simultaneous tasks. That's crucial for parallel processing. Now, the ninth generation consoles also have a much better GPU capability, memory speeds, bandwidth. It allows for rendering detailed graphics much quicker than before. And at a much more detailed rate, it allows for more detailed AI and physics. We already know how much of a difference the introduction of SSDs to console gaming has made. So thankfully, GTA 6 likely won't have the multi-minute load screens of previous Rockstar games. But it actually goes a lot deeper than that. The PS5 and the Xbox Series X feature hardware accelerated ray tracing and variable rate shading. It allows the hardware to get much more detail with the lighting and the shading without putting too much weight on the system. And that variable rate shading can actually help with the game's performance while utilizing all those crazy effects. Basically, Rockstar made some amazing looking games on the PS4 and the Xbox One and the simple fact that they are now developing for the PS5 and the Xbox Series is going to allow them to fine-tune practically every visual aspect of their games to an insane degree. Rockstar's engine is a work of art, and when it comes to rendering incredible visuals, it's easy to forget the last time they released a game was 2018. I mean, almost six years ago. I mean, five years ago. And that game was developed for consoles released over a decade ago. Think of all the extra touches that they could put on a new game and all the added horsepower with the new consoles. Now, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X have been criticized by many for their somewhat underwhelming game performance. I'll agree with that. I was hoping we would have left 30 frames per second behind in the dust, but we didn't. But the technical leap between the PS4 and the PS5 was pretty massive, and Rockstar had already put the legwork to make RDR2 look as good as it did on the old system. The team has a lot of wiggle room to make GTA 6 look incredible, especially with all the extra time they've taken to optimize it. But that's actually not where this Reddit post ended because the OP went into even more detail about how Rockstar builds and programs their games and how much of a boost 
a game built for the PS5 and the Xbox Series is going to get compared to being built for the last gen. The improvements to lighting techniques made in the last few years are going to go a long way in GTA 6 compared to what presents or what is present in the console versions of RDR2 and GTA 5. And you go look at RDR2 with like max settings and you say, how much better can it get? And you're right. There comes a point where we peak out on graphics. I, I think, I think there's going to come a point, right? You might not realize it, but there's been a ton of advancements made to the way game developers program in-game lighting over the last five to six years. And so again, it's easy to forget that a game as beautiful as RDR2 was made before a lot of those new techniques were commonplace. There were also a ton of new techniques for loading, rendering high quality textures, I mean, environmental effects, all those things have just been made better by the added horsepower of the new consoles. So once again, if we peek out graphics, then what are we focused on if we're Rockstar? Well, you're focused on the AI behavior, you're focused on super, super fast and smooth loading times, all that stuff, right? The FPS, another huge factor is going to be, uh, well, it's going to be unique to GTA is all the advancements Rockstar reportedly made with their AI behind, AI behind the scenes. We talked about this in a video. You don't really think about AI when you think about a game's graphics. And admittedly, AI has nothing to do with the visuals, but it has a ton to do with the immersion of the game. A lot of reports have been coming out about patents filed by Rockstar and Take-Two that reveal just how detailed the NPC AI will be in GTA 6 and how it's going to make every character that you see around the map feel much more lifelike and immersive. And that's going to go a long way immersing you into this world like you weren't going to be immersed anyway. The fact that the new consoles can handle so much information so fast over the PS4 and the Xbox One means Rockstar has a lot more space to work with and they can program a ton of additional possible interactions for you to have with everybody you see. And all those NPCs can be loaded with more animations, possible actions, things they do, emotions while they wander around the map, uh, goals they have, aspirations in life, who knows? The post concluded with the OP basically saying the three main factors contributing to the graphical jump that we will see in this game is the technology available to them, the development resources that Take-Two is footing the bill for, and uh, their track record. Remember, Take-Two is reportedly putting over a billion dollars into the game because they know no matter how expensive it gets, they're going to make money. That's a really special spot to be in. It's a rare spot. Now, I do want to be cynical for a minute and talk about a rather hot topic that you may have been thinking about throughout this video. How is all this going to impact the gameplay? Rockstar will surely deliver one of the most immersive and beautiful games we've ever seen, right? But how's the game going to play? RDR2, for all its amazing technical achievements, was heavily criticized by many longtime Rockstar fans for being repetitive in that simple mission design. When you go back and look at the classic Rockstar open world games like GTA 3 and Vice City, there was a lot to do. There was a lot of creativity on display in the level design, but when you compare that to GTA 5 and RDR 2, it's impossible to deny that things have gotten a lot simpler. Some fans are worried that Rockstar is compromising gameplay creativity for the sake of technical accomplishments. I don't think that's the case, but people have been talking. Now remember, the massive Rockstar leak showed us in-development builds of GTA 6. People are still analyzing that old, old build of the game and revealing more gameplay details, and frankly, this is going, I mean, it's, it's looking like the deepest gameplay system Rockstar's ever had. They're not just making the most impressive visuals and open world we've probably ever seen. They're also making the gameplay way more engaging than anything I've ever experienced. There are more movement options than ever before. The gunplay seems to be deeper. The cop AI is reportedly being totally reworked to be more realistic and difficult to go up against. And it really bodes well for the rest of the game. I guess we don't know yet just how the missions are going to play out. But I'm hoping Rockstar has been listening to the community over the last few years and they decide to make the single player missions in GTA 6 more like what is available in GTA 3 rather than RDR 2. I know people love RDR 2. I do too. But I would really like to see GTA 6's world put to good use. Give the player more options. Give them more freedom. Give us multiple ways to approach situations. Make the map more engaging so we can feel like we're having an impact on the game and how it's playing out instead of just following linear on the rails instructions. There you go, my friends. We're almost there. The countdown has started, and we're going to start getting a lot of answers. Let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you soon.